What if you don't? That's what we're talking about today on the eCentral Business Show. I'm John Naylor, and I'm joined by Toph. Have you ever had a last name, or was that all that's on your passport? No, it's, that's, that's just how I'm personal, Brandon. Oh, us. fantastic. Well, it's, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I always think there's going to be something that's in a meal you don't really want to eat. Yeah. But anyway, look, just leave that all alone. Now, what if you don't? Now, have we come up with this as a subject? You, off camera, spoke about regret factoring. Hit me. Yeah, sure. So regret factoring is a little calculation you can play in your head that if you're not going to do it, then you're going to regret it later in life. So a lot of people will talk about their fears where there are fear of snakes, spiders. One of my biggest fears is jellyfish. But that shouldn't be the uh, driving factor to stop you in life. It should be regret because Stephen Hawking tried to prove through wormholes, through many ways, like the guy has 11 degrees, he knows his stuff. Yeah, sure it does. You cannot go backwards in time. He even thought there was like a Benjamin Button theory where we reach a certain age and then it's going to symmetrically go back so we de-age. I think de-age is the right word. But you cannot. So we can actually go forward in time only through three ways. Um, Now, I can't remember all three, but I know one's cosmologically. Mm -hmm. And we can only go forward. So not to sound like a Zen Buddhist, but today is the youngest day we'll ever be. Yeah, right. Therefore, from now to the time whenever we die, there's like this uncertainty there we have to kind of act on what we can because you don't want to get to your deathbed and be like i wish i did that and it's a pro- pretty common thing you'll hear the elderly elderly say it's the, th- oh, it's not the things yeah. they did do it's, yeah. it's not the things they did do it's the things they didn't do mm. because then it really shows you the importance of failing mm. and you should because then you fail quick then you learn quick so for me i like to do regret factoring even though i'm relatively young i've understood the power of this concept relatively early so i can get ahead yeah, there okay. So a, a very good example is... So you, um, is this sort of a mindset thing where you're thinking yes. about yes. that future part, or that future situation yes. where you haven't done that and looking yes. back to reflect on Absolutely. what you haven't done? So where we have... Um, I, have I have a quote that's, everyone's fixated on the past instead of fixated on the path. Yeah. So that's past-focused living. You cannot go backwards. It's what I was talking about before. You cannot go backwards in time, so why focus on it? Then you've got present-focused living. That's very uh, meditative stuff to be living in the now and yeah. the present. So you don't want to get to the end of the day and be like, where the hell did my day go? Because you're living in autonomy. Make sure you Even the power of breathing is insane. But then you've got future-focused living, and that's where you can... You know what? Humans are like one of the most... Um, what's the best word? Uh, yeah, um, advanced creatures, because the fact that we can simulate the future... Whether yeah. it's right or wrong. We can imagine we can, it, yeah. We can imagine it. And we get real deep and the things that we can do. Um, I'll tell you something. You've got the breakthrough. Mm. The day before the breakthrough, it's a crazy idea. The day after the breakthrough, it's an obvious idea. Mm. So I'll tell you that now. And so, it's locked in, yeah. And it's locked in. That's why if you if five years ago someone said Bitcoin's going to be worth 11,000 bucks for one, yeah. everyone's like, yeah, nah. nah. <laughs> now everyone's like, no, I can see it going to 20. It's like <laughs> 20,000. So that's... It, yeah, and for me, like a really good example is Steve Ballmer. So he's the guy that he was the CEO of Microsoft. Mm-hmm. When um, Bill Gates and Paul Allen started Microsoft, I think about seven or eight years in, when there were only about 30 employees, they needed a CEO, and Bill wasn't going to be the right CEO because he's an introvert, and he's more of the guy that's in the back. So they needed a, guy, they needed a new guy to be the face of the brand. So um, Bill pulled out of Harvard to start Microsoft, and he had sure. his good friend, Steve Barmer, and he convinced him, persuaded him, you should leave Harvard, the most prestigious school in right. a high school, uh, university college, and come work for us. And since he's been there for his decade career, decades of career, he, he retired with a $27 billion net worth. Now, wow. he's probably like, I probably doesn't bother me that I didn't stay with Harvard. Now you've got the Clippers and all that. So it's like, wow, it's fascinating. So do you think he's regretting leaving Harvard? You're probably thinking, maybe not. <laughs> well, at the start he may have. Mm. And he, you, you know, it's kind of, do we go off emotion or do we go off logic? Mm. And it's almost kind of go with your heart or something. If you've got a really good hunch behind it and, you can, and it has a decent purpose and vision, mm. just do it. And if it doesn't, at least it's good feedback for the next time you go to try. Yeah, sure. Or else sure. you're going to regret it. Yeah, well, that's it. So, and they meant that whole what if you don't type thing, I guess, is yeah, in terms of future pacing yourself. So, you, you can imagine that future thing, look back at your, on the possibilities and what, and the, consider the consequences of both outcomes, yeah? Totally. Wow, okay, yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, mm. there's one other framework I love to use around this sort of thing, and just yeah. to touch on that as well, which I find quite powerful. And uh, 
that I didn't think well, I haven't seen it anywhere else as well, is that you know we often think about like at 49, I got 51 years to live to make to 100 type thing. So like, yeah. oh, 51 years, I can do a shitload in that time. Yes. You know, and then you think, oh, okay, well, what's that in hours? Oh, that's tens of thousands of hours, isn't it? Totally. And um, so comparatively, then I find it also interesting to also measure myself in terms of weeks or end or days. Yes. You know, because you know, 51 years and weeks is well, 50, 50, it's about 2,500 weeks. And you think, hmm, huh, that's a finite number, isn't it? Totally. I better get on with it. That's it. And, and people get, often say to me, like, John, why are you in such a hurry? I said, I've got a shitload to do, you know? That's it. You were on a man, we're all people on a mission. Mm. Um, and I think when you're associated with weeks, you know how fast a week can go by. Mm. And it, no matter how arbitrary that number is, and even though it's going to be substantially longer than the years, because it's 52 times more, that you, you still realise that, well, I've got to get my ass in again no matter what. Mm. And, uh, like, there's 86,400 seconds in a day. There's only... A, only a few of those seconds where you can make like a life-changing moment. Mm. So even use those seconds, those like carpe diem as much as you can. Oh, yeah, okay. And uh, when you start realizing your actual mission in life so you can see the end goal, I guess for me it comes to the legacy, what I want to be remembered for, because that's my, that's the true end goal for me, because that's the end. I can't go past death. Whether we live on, I cannot prove that. So mm. you go back and sure. then even trying to meet up with the right people, Am I going to regret not missing out? And you mm. kind of start to filter out the right people. You start to go towards, to gravitate the water the right people. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because you That's know so cool. where to put the GPS in the car. You're not driving for the sake of driving. Mm. Yeah. Okay, whole different subject we started to touch on there. Yeah. Now just, <laughs> now just on credentials, though, and maybe some of the people out there that are uh, li uh, linked in with me uh, don't appreciate your credentials, you know, and even talking about that carpa, carpa D moment. Carpa D moment. Yeah. What was that moment where you decided, hey, I'm going to go... You know, ultra marathon from base camp. I mean, what was the moment you like? It became this crazy idea to this yeah, sure. doable reality. Uh, one thing, curiosity, literally. So I started small. You don't want to go too big. Like it's okay to have the vision, mm. but you don't want to go straight to the very big one straight away because you're going to get PTSD. Mm. Start small, so the domino effects. So that little domino can smack off the big one at the end. It physically can't stop because it's, there's no leverage. It's mm. like impossible to, uh, to the law of physics. Yeah. So you start small and you work your way up until the point where the fear you can take, like you can almost touch the fear, but you can put it to the side because mm. you, you know what you can deal with. But you like, how far can I t push this thing? And you start becoming almost recognized as a go-to person that it kind of builds your self-confidence because now people are seeking you for advice on certain things that, yeah, it kind of... How far can I take this? Maybe I, this is a meant to be kind of. Maybe thing. I can run down from Everest Bank again. Maybe I can run down from Everest. Yeah. You're a nut, man. Now we're out of time. Now, how do people connect with you? Yeah, sure. So uh, my site tof-evans.com. So yeah. T-O-F-E-Evans. And anyone is, I'm the kind of guy that's the advocate and the spokesman, spokesperson on mental health. So if anyone wants to reach out and tell me the story, if they have no one else to talk to because they feel ashamed and disparaged. You're more than welcome to hit me up because I'm the last person to shame you. I know what it feels like to hit rock bottom. And uh, if you just need a friend or if you just want to say hi, if you want to collaborate, you're more than welcome to say hello to me. Yeah. So, yeah. Fabulous. Thank you, Toph. Thanks for coming on the Thanks e Central me, Business Show today. Now, stick around for another question. You got a bit more time? Yes. Fantastic. All right, that's enough for today. I'm John Naylor. Thank you very much for watching another episode of the eCentral Business Show. What we're doing on the eCentral Business Show is we're bringing you business leaders and the best of the knowledge. We want to bring them on the show and release that content so that that's something that we can share with you by this easy to consume format. So you can follow us across LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Google Plus, or just regularly visit the eCentral comma you slash show website, pick out the best things for you and educate yourself on that premise. Now there's video content there for you, so you can just watch the video and, and, and inform yourself in your own time. We've also now podcasting that content as well, so it's really simple to consume. You can listen to it on the way to work in the car or during your daily exercise regime. Beyond that, we're also looking to connect with business experts. So if you consider yourself to be a, an expert in your field, please make contact so we can schedule you in and have you come on the show so you can release your content and increase your brand across our format. Uh, beyond that, we also invite people to send us their email address so we can send you our